Hello and welcome to Queensland Weekender. This pretty stretch of sand is proof that you don't have to venture far out of Brisbane City to get a taste of sea air. I'll tell you exactly where it is a little later, but first, here's what else we've got today. Victoria is soaring high above Cairns. A tropical adventure on a fire-breathing beauty. Steve Titmus from Seven News shares his love of sailing. There are some things in life that you try just once and you become hooked for life. We meet a Sunshine Coast volunteer awarded an Order of Australia. It's a great satisfaction. And I'm day tripping to Brisbane seaside. What a day for kite surfing. Absolutely fantastic. First up is Jess. When I was a teenager, I had very different taste in music to my friends, while most of them were getting giddy over pop stars or sustaining whiplash injuries from headbanging to heavy metal. I was all about the blues. I'm talking B.B. King, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Robin Ford, the Bondi Cigars. I was seriously obsessed. I still am. And it turns out that I'm not alone. Blues on Brawl Beach is a four-day music festival that attracts around 120,000 people. And it features some big names in the biz, like Diesel. I think this is the ultimate sort of environment for a festival. You've got so many great restaurants, cafes, great accommodation, and great weather and a beach right there. I mean, what more do you need? It's perfect. And the other draw card, it's free. There's both international and local artists singing the blues throughout the Broad Beach CBD. You can catch an act from any vantage point. Someone I'm keen to see is 18-year-old Josh Needs. He's played with Tommy Emmanuel, he's supported Diesel, and he's been playing at Blues on Broad Beach for five years. What is it about blues? I know that for me it's just so infectious. Yeah. What do you, what do you love about it? Oh, well, I, I started off as a guitar player, and blues is pretty much a guitar orientated genre. So I, I love playing that type of music and just it's just awesome, it's just got a flavour to it that everybody kind of connects to. Doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are. Steve and Janine from Melbourne are making a holiday out of it. Anyone who's thinking of coming to the festival for the first time, what would you say? Just come, walk around, listen, and if you like what you're hearing, just stay there and listen to it. Otherwise just cruise on down and you'll find something else that you like to your taste. And then the food is amazing as well. Festivities continue well into the night. I'm a huge fan of a band called the Bondi Cigars. The last time I saw them play live was oh, about 10 years ago. I really wanted to meet them, but I didn't have the guts to say good day after the gig. So today, I'm making up for lost time. How does it make you feel seeing all your fans out there, seeing Terrific. you know the punters loving your music? It makes me feel good. You know, I'm, I'm surprised that we're still doing it at, the, at this stage. We've been going for this is the 26th year. Well, you do the honour and, and sign my CDs. Absolutely. I've had them since I was 15. They're a bit scratched up. Oh, I'm going to treasure much. these forever. Thank you so much. Blues on Broad Beach is coming up again next month. There's still plenty of time to book some accommodation and get away to the Gold Coast. The four-day event is on from the 18th to the 21st of May. It's so, so good and best of all, free. Lovely to meet you, hug it out. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah So cool. Festival season sure is upon us. From Broad Beach on the Gold Coast to a music festival that's a little more inland. This year, Triple J's One Night Stand will be heading to the heart of Outback Queensland, the Isa. The event will be held on Saturday the 22nd of April and is tipped to attract 10,000 music fans from across the country. So start planning a road trip and get your accommodation booked. Entry to the music festival is free. Still to come, we catch up with Queensland Air Museum's most dedicated volunteer of 40 years. And we go sailing with Steve Tipmas from Seven News. We're going to go cruising off the Sunshine Coast. You can take the helm or you can sit back and take it easy. There are some things in life that you try just once and you become hooked for life. 
For me, it was the power of the wind and the sails that ignited a passion that will never die. When I was seven years old, my father brought my brothers and I an old dinghy. We called it Musketeer. They are some of my happiest childhood memories. And today, not even grey skies can dampen my desire to get out on the water. Someone who shares my passion for the sport is Malula Bar local, Brian Pearson. What's the thrill of sailing for you? I just uh, love the purity of it. It's just you, it's the wind, the waves, you're using the elements. It's a lovely way to travel. Brian also discovered sailing when he was a young lad. It's a bit like once you're a sailor, you're always a sailor. I do think it stays with you. It gets in your blood. Brian has turned his passion for the sport into a charter business called Set Sail Cruises. So for those people who come out here, uh, Brian, um, do you have to work hard or not? Do I look like I'm working hard? <laughs> <laughs> what can you do on board and what can't you do? Yeah, no, you can choose your own adventure. So if you are a keen sailor and want to get involved in the sailing, you certainly can. You can jump on, have a steer, you can hoist the sails, you can trim the sails, you can do the whole sailing experience, or you can just lounge in a bean bag and watch the Sunshine Coast float by. Two southerners, Don and Susie, went out sailing with Brian and it became their lives. We had uh, never sailed before and we never owned a boat before, before we came on with Brian. So we decided to go and buy a boat and go sailing and took it all the way to Lizard Island and loved it. If you can't beat them, join them. That's right. <laughs> that's right and that's our home now. Mugdimba Island is a highlight on today's sail. Locals know it as Old Woman Island because its side profile depicts a face. Set sail cruisers head out daily from the Malula Bar Yacht Club. A three hour round trip costs only $30 for an adult, $85 for families. It's BYO food, or call ahead and order a delicious platter from the Yacht Club. Oh fantastic, nothing like a shrimp is there. Once you're back on dry land, you can relax in style at the newly opened Breeze Malula Bar. It's right next to the beach, and just a short stroll to the shops. Take your pick from one or two bedroom self-contained apartments and soak up the incredible views of the coastline. My name is Cliff Robinson. Here we're in Hangar 2 at the Queensland Air Museum at Caloundra. I became a member of the museum here in 1978. The museum at that point was located in Brisbane it then shifted up here at the invitation of the local council. Five aircraft were brought up from Brisbane and that's all we had. From that point on, we have grown by adding aircraft from all sorts of places. Most of the aircraft we, we acquire are not complete and so they involve a fair amount of work. It often involves chasing parts, perhaps all over the world. The aircraft currently that I'm working on is a tailplane for an Avro Anson, a wartime transport. For me, it's an opportunity to get hands dirty again and get involved with the nitty gritty of restoring aircraft and bringing them up to display standard. It's a great satisfaction. It uh, gives my wife an opportunity to have a free day as I come up here once a week. For us to walk through here and see the results of 30 to 40 years work on display and in relatively good condition. And it's a great source of pride to all of us. Well, I've had my own grandchildren here and it uh, won't be long before I have my great grandchildren here. On open cockpit day, we have a number of the aircraft open and people can climb in or on. It's wonderful to see what that does, particularly to children. They come away wide-eyed and absolutely stoked. Last year Australia Day Awards, I received the Order of Australia Medal from the hands of the Governor of Queensland. It related to my time with the Queensland Air Museum here. Um, it is very satisfying to have recognition of the work that's been involved over all these years. for me. I can't believe I've waited so long to try it, heading up, up and away. Oh. Oh. Holiday
holidays are usually about long, lazy sleep-ins, aren't they? But they're also about ticking off bucket list experiences, things you've never done. And sometimes that means you've got to get up early. Hello. It's 4am, and while most people are snoozing into their pillow, I'm heading to high ground with the team from Hot Air Cairns. About an hour's drive from the city, up on the Atherton Tablelands, two fire-breathing beauties are billowing to life. Weather permitting, hot air ballooning happens every day here at Mareeba. Hundreds take the ride each year, but this is my first time. I'm so excited, Tony. <laughs> Thank you. This is um, quite amazing, the, the way that you kind of leave the ground. It's so calm and peaceful. It feels like you're floating off. It's like the movie. Oh. Pepe Sands is our pilot and an experienced one at that. This is my first time in a hot air balloon and yep. I'm absolutely amazed. I guess you're pretty used to it by now. How long have you been flying? Uh, flying 22 years, in ballooning 13 years. So where else have you flown balloons? Uh, in Spain, where I come from, Morocco, in Africa, France, Mexico, Tanzania. Oh, it sounds very exotic. How did you find yourself in Mariba? I came here four years ago. This is one of the best places in the world to fly balloons. Up here, yeah, we have an average of 340 days of good weather for flight. And there is no other place in the world where you can fly so, so, so many days. When you're flying, there's things you can and can't control, isn't it? Yeah, I, we don't have a stay wheel, we don't have any type of engine, so we are flying with the same speed and with the same direction where the wind goes. That means that to go to the right or go to the left, first we need to find the wind that is going to the right or to the left. So, yeah, it's not mechanical, it's just feeling. Pepe's got that right, and for me, that feeling is one of pure freedom. Once you get over all the excitement and the adrenaline, there's this amazing sense of calm, if you can be calm at 3,000 feet. But it is, you just feel really at peace as you're sort of looking down on the world below. Spread out beneath a patchwork quilt of farms. One of those properties will be our landing site, depending on the whim of the wind. As Pepe begins our descent, some of the natives make themselves scarce. Lower and lower over the landscape we skim, and pretty soon, it's time to brace for landing. Oh, what a landing. That was as, as exciting as the flight. Now is the big job of packing up the balloon. I get to head for some brekkie. Hot air balloon cans launch their big, beautiful balloons from Mareeba on the Atherton Tablelands every day of the year, weather permitting. Your ticket to fly also includes door-to-door -door transfers from your hotel in Port Douglas or Cairns. By the way, there's a big bonus to a dawn balloon adventure. You're back in Cairns with plenty of daylight left to spend in paradise. I'm staying at Shangri-La Hotel on the big blue doorstep of the Coral Sea, overlooking Trinity Bay and pretty Marlin Marina. Each spacious guest room or suite comes with private balcony opening up to stunning harbour and mountain views. I'm keen to try out that gorgeous swimming pool a little later but first things first, breakfast. North Bar and Kitchen serve up a full buffet spread for brekkie each morning and a la carte for lunch and dinner. And I have to say, I'm quite surprised by how much of an appetite you work up floating about in midair. The Shangri-La Hotel offers five-star luxury accommodation overlooking the gorgeous Cairns Marina. North Bar and Kitchen is open daily for elegant waterfront dining overlooking lush mountain and sea views. Feast your eyes on the Noosa Food and Wine Festival. This year's festival is a celebration of what makes eating and drinking in Australia great. Some of the country's finest chefs and winemakers are preparing a delicious lineup to tuck into. There'll be brunches, dinners, cocktail parties, and experiences popping up in locations around Noosa. The festival is on from Thursday the 18th of May until Sunday the 21st. So head to the website to get your tickets booked. Bon appetit. Listen up, foodies of Brisbane. Our city's popular Eat Street Markets has relocated, but you won't have to travel far. MacArthur Avenue in Hamilton will still host the markets, 
but now there's just more room to spread out. Enjoy the same tasty food and the same vibrant atmosphere every weekend. After the break, a close-up look at something I have never tried before. The seaside suburb of Sandgate has been a popular getaway for generations of Brisbane locals. Located north of the city, its tourist trade history dates back to the late 1860s, where beachside cottages were listed as holiday rentals for just £3 per week. The beach in those days was crowded. Today, Sandgate remains a lovely place to visit. This pier is an icon on the foreshore. The original one stood for an impressive 130 years. Then last year, it was replaced with this brand new one. It's lovely to be able to walk out over the water. I am just hoping that at the end, there's an ice cream cart. Stretching 350 metres out into Bramble Bay, it's Brisbane's largest timber pier. Great for a stroll and very popular for fishing. <laughs> but no ice cream vendors. Although the original pier didn't stand the test of time, a number of buildings have in town. The Sandgate Baptist Church was built in 1887. It's no longer a place of worship, but it has been very well preserved. Around the same vintage is the old post office, now a restaurant. And the Sandgate Town Hall is another historical landmark, hailing from the early 1900s. The construction price was £5,000. Its clock is reputedly one of the oldest working timepieces in Brisbane. So, what's new in town? How about this little cheery shop that likes to mix vintage with modern? Hello Ducky is a treasure trove of Granny's best heirlooms. This is beautiful! I'm in heaven. Owner Jody is a self-confessed purveyor of all things pretty. I grew up amongst this kind of thing. Like to use these pieces is quite normal to me and to use modern stuff all the time is like... I don't understand it. <laughs> so, is the idea to mix it then? Yeah, to mix it. So, if you have constant vintage, you can feel like you're in a museum. But if you mix it up with modern things, it gives it a new lease of life, it makes it look fresh, and plus you've got that sense of history. There's a neat clutter of crockery on just about every surface, most of which was made in England. A colourful selection of vintage-style clothing too. There's a bit of everything here, I guess you could say. Tell me, where do you source all these beautiful bits and pieces? I am constantly sourcing, so I don't sleep, I source. And I go to auctions, vintage auctions, estate sales. People even call me now and say, hey, I'm clearing out my cupboards, would you like to come and have a look? And I'm like, yes, please. So I, I just constantly source pretty things. Hello Ducky doubles as a coffee shop, so you can take a seat out front and enjoy a tea break. Lovely. Thank you. This is just perfect tea and cake because where I'm headed next, I'm going to be burning a lot of energy. Kite surfing is a very popular sport down on the waterfront. Paddy from Surf Connect has been teaching the sport here for 10 years. What exactly is kite surfing? Kite surfing is basically flying a kite in there, which I'm sure you have done when you were in the childhood. But we get propelled on a little board on the water like a wakeboard. So, so you... instead of being pulled by a boat, we get pulled by the kite. Most of the time you're hooked into a harness, which takes the weight of the kite. So your arms are really used for steering. So oh, I thought you'd have to have really big muscles to hold all. on. Not at all. Around 15,000 students have passed through Paddy's school. Sadly, I won't be one of them. Conditions are a bit too windy for beginners, but fantastic for the pros. The thrill is unbelievable, and that joy of getting crews on with Mother Nature is indescribable. Well, it may have been too windy for me as a beginner to actually try kite surfing, for real, but it's not too windy to have a go on this virtual reality kite simulator. Apparently I whack the goggles on, I lean back and have heaps of fun. So here goes. 
Surf Connect offer a range of lessons and activities seven days a week on the Sandgate waterfront. And Hello Ducky is open Monday to Saturday from nine till four. For more great ideas, take a look at our website. You can keep up with our travels on Facebook and Instagram. Three other great websites are queensland.com, RACQ and the Queensland Rail travel websites. Woo! Oh, <laughs> that is so much fun. It turns out actually that I'm quite good at it too. Didn't even have to get wet. <laughs> that is all we've got for this week's show. Make sure you stay tuned next Saturday for more Queensland Weekend. And bye for now.